Hi everyone, welcome back to the Heterogeneous Parallel Programming class. We are at lecture 1.8, Kernel-Based Parallel Programming, and we will be discussing basic matrix matrix multiplication. The objective for this lecture is to prepare you for the lab assignment of matrix matrix multiplication, and then um, uh, we will first review the computation for matrix multiplication, and then um, we will also um, uh, discuss how we can do data uh, block and thread index to data index mapping for this particular computation. And then we will introduce loop control flow in kernels. Matrix multiplication um, is a fairly uh, frequently used computation in uh, engineering and science applications. And the uh, computation is fairly simple. We have two input matrices, A and B, and then uh, we will generate a product matrix C. The, um, each C element is generated as a product of a row of A and a column of B. So uh, we, uh, in this particular picture, we show that uh, a C element has a coordinate uh, row and COL. And um, so we would uh, use a row in A with the index ROW, and then we will have a uh, use a column uh, of B with index COL, and we will uh, take the row and column to take to do a uh, vector dot product to generate the value of the C element. In all the discussions that we have today, we will assume that we will uh, be doing a uh, we will have a matrix which is of dimension M times N. And B matrix will be of dimension N times K. And then uh, we will generate a C matrix M times K. So uh, the N part is going to uh, the, um, the number of elements in a row and the number of elements in a column, which is N um, uh, of B, uh, which is represented in variable n here must match because we're doing a dot product, so we must have the same number of elements of a and same elements of b in that um, in that dot product. So uh, we are going to um, have use these variables consistently in all the examples in this lecture. So here we show a simple um, sequential C code for matrix multiplication. And um, the C code will have two levels of loops. And um, uh, the loop, uh, these two levels of loops systematically um, go through all the uh, C elements uh, in all the row positions and the row, all the column positions. And for every uh, C element that it visits, it will generate a dot product and, uh, of the A corresponding A row and B column for that C element. So here is the, uh, the C code for, the, uh, for generating each C element. We'll first initialize C element to zero, and then we will go and systematically visit uh, all the elements in the row of A and column of B. When we visit the row of A, we will uh, first uh, need to reach the beginning location of that row. And the beginning location is, um, is, can be uh, found by multiplying variable row by the number of elements in each row, which is n. So row times n moves us into the beginning location of the row in the linear um, uh, ma row major layout of A. And then um, we do the same thing with B. In, in B's case, the beginning location of the column is actually in row zero. So uh, it's simply a, uh, we can simply use COL to move the um, you know uh, to move the um, the, the uh, index into the beginning element of B. Now, with, for every iteration of the I loop, we will need to be able to calculate the uh, the corresponding element within the row and column. So for A, it's very simple. Uh, we uh, all the elements in the uh, in the same row are going to be in adjacent locations. So all we have to do is to just add i to the beginning index, and that will give us the, um, the element, in, uh, the appropriate element for that iteration. For b, it's a little bit more complex, because 
uh, in row major layout, all the elements in a column are going to be uh, in strided locations. So we need to multiply i by the number of elements in each row, which is k for, uh, for b, and then uh, we, uh, we add that to um, the beginning location. So these two memory accesses give us the appropriate elements of a and b in each iteration, and then we would do the multiplication, we accumulate the result into sum. And this, uh, once we finish the for loop, we have the, com uh, the total value for the C element. So now we can uh, write that C element value into the, uh, into the appropriate C location. And this is the location at row and column. So uh, we, again, we will just calculate the linearized address by multiplying row uh, with k and then uh, uh, add column to the index. So this gives us the complete C sequential code for matrix multiplication. Notice that um, this particular uh, calculation is a very simple and um, uh, very basic form. And um, since matrix multiplication is very important com cal uh, computation, there are actually lots and lots of optimized way of doing sequential uh, computation. We will come back to this point later on. So here, uh, we will begin to design a kernel uh, function in CUDA to perform uh, matrix multiplication in parallel. So uh, we're going to uh, use a very small example to, uh, to give you the intuition behind the design of the uh, kernel function. So uh, here, uh, we're going to uh, assume that we're going to be using a two-dimensional square thread block to organize um, the threads uh, to calculate C. And um, um, that is, each thread block is going to have equal number of threads in both the X and Y dimension. And obviously, this is a simplifying uh, assumption that you can, uh, you can definitely use a rectangular uh, uh, block organization, but here we use a, a square organization just to keep the, thread, uh, the slide simple. And um, so assuming that uh, we, we, you, we have a square organization, we will just assume that uh, we have a compile time defined constant of tile width. And this tile width is going to give us the number of threads in each dimension of the thread block. And um, uh, we, uh, we, we have a simple example here of uh, C uh, to calculate a C a matrix of four times three, for a four by three matrix for C. So uh, in this case, M equal to four and K equal to three. We also will further assume that N is four for both A and B, and uh, which is not visible in this slide, but it will become uh, useful later on. So uh, for this very simple, uh, small example, uh, we have four elements in the Y dimension and three elements in the X dimension of C. And um, we need to make sure that we generate enough thread blocks to calculate all the C elements. If we assume that the tile width is true for this simple example, then uh, we, can, we will go through the same ceiling fun function calculation we would, uh, that we used before in the uh, picture kernel. Then we will, uh, uh, we will conclude that we need to have two thread blocks in the y dimension as well as two thread blocks in the x dimension to be able to, uh, to cover the generation of calculation of all the C elements. So uh, this gives us the simple example that we're going to be working with. And in every thread, block, we're going to have two threads in the X dimension and two, th two threads in the Y dimension uh, so that um, uh, these threads are going to be accessing uh, the C elements that are uh, located in the tile that this thread block is responsible for. So now we're ready to, uh, to discuss the host code for invoking the uh, matrix multiplication kernel. And um, uh, we assume that um, uh, we have the uh, the matrix dimension variables M, N, and K available in the host code. So we will be generating in, uh, we'll, we'll be uh, using the uh, ceiling function expression based on K and M to uh, generate enough uh, thread blocks for uh, covering all the C elements. So this is just, uh, you know, very similar to what we uh, use in the picture kernel. And um, for each thread block, we're going to declare that uh, we're going to have thread width and thread width number of threads in the X and Y dimension. 
and then uh, we would, uh, because z dimension is not used, we're going to be just using one, um, you know, what, uh, for that dimension. So uh, we will be uh, launching the kernel with the uh, the, the uh, grid dimension and block dimension uh, that we set up in the host code, and then we will pass n n k and uh, pointers to a, b, and c. Just another reminder: um, a matrix is going to be m times n. The b matrix is going to be n times k, and c matrix is going to be n times k. Here we show the matrix multiplication kernel, and um, uh, we at the beginning. Every thread is going to determine the, the row and column index of the C element that it's, uh, it's uh, calculating. And then uh, they will all proceed to test whether the row index and column index are within the value range. If the, uh, these indices are within the value range, then uh, we will uh, do, go through that for loop to, uh, to access the elements of the row in, of A and elements of the column of B to uh, produce the inner product. So this is uh, pretty much the same as the sequential code. And after the for loop, we have, you know, we have the, uh, the, uh, the C element value. So we will you write that C element value into the, uh, into the global memory. And the calculation is exactly the same as C. So this is the reason why we uh, took the time to discuss the row major layout and the linearization of variables. You know, keep in mind that uh, in in CUDA, because A, B, and C are all going to be dynamically allocated with CUDA malloc, so that's why we need to, you know, what, uh, do the linearization in the uh, in, of these indices when we read from A and B and write into C. Now we're uh, ready to uh, to review just a little bit more uh, dynamic execution behavior of the kernel. So uh, as we mentioned there will be four thread blocks uh, executing this kernel for our small uh, four by three C example. So uh, we are going, uh, here we show the work that uh, thread block zero zero is going to be doing. So uh, you know what, for thread block zero zero, uh, the block index and the X and Y dimension are both zero. So this means that when we calculate the row index and column index, the, um, th these values are solely going to be de determined by the thread index in the x and y dimension. So here we show that um, uh, the row and column in, uh, indices will be 0 and 1 and, um, for uh, all the four threads. So let's take a look at the work that uh, thread 0, 0 is going to do. Thread 0, 0 is going to have row value of 0 and column value of 0. So it's going to be accessing the zeroth row of A and the zeroth column of B. And we're showing a horizontal arrow in this direction here and the vertical arrow down the zeroth column of B to indicate all the memory accesses that thread zero, zero is going to do in block zero, zero. And then similarly, uh, for uh, thread one, one, it's going to, uh, to, to have a row value of one and column value of one. So it's going to be accessing um, row one and column one, uh, row one of A and column one of B. So we're also showing this with the horizontal arrow going through the uh, row one and vertical arrow going through column one in the, uh, in the picture. So this picture shows the work that all the four threads in block zero, zero will be doing when executing that kernel. And in fact, um, you're, you, you, sh you are encouraged to use very small numbers, such as the ones that we provided here, to test your kernel and make sure that um, you, you can look at all the numbers and um, uh, review the correctness of these numbers before you start to uh, use your kernel on large matrices. So just for a little bit uh, more uh, insight, uh, we would uh, uh, look at the work for block zero one. Uh, in this case, uh, the block, the y um, dimension, uh, the y uh, dimension block index is still zero, but the x dimension uh, block index is one. So in, in this case, uh, 
the row indices remain the same because the row index indices are calculated based on the Y uh, block index, which is zero. However, uh, the uh, X index of the block, uh, the X dimension of the block index is now one. So we effectively shifted the column value of the threads to two, three compared to block zero, zero. So now we see that um, all the threads in this thread block are going to be processing the upper right corner of the C matrix. And um, um, so if, if we look at thread zero, zero in this block, it's going to be still accessing row zero of A, but it's going to uh, access, uh, accessing column two of B. And then uh, it would uh, generate that dot product and write into C02. Um, and the more interesting situa uh, uh, comparison is that uh, for thread 01 and uh, uh, so thread uh, 10 and, uh, and thread 11. For those two threads, the, uh, they're actually going to be processing column three of C, which is outside the valid range. So both of those threads are going to fail the condition test uh, of the if statement. So the, those threads, uh, these two threads will not be doing any work or doing any kind of memory access um, in the kernel, uh, when ex uh, ex uh, uh, executing the kernel. So uh, this gives us a, a good illustration of the runtime behavior. And I would like to encourage you to finish the analysis of uh, of this example for block one zero and block one one, okay. So at this point, we have uh, finished the um, the uh, coverage of the uh, simple matrix multiplication kernel in CUDA, and um, uh, what you are ready for the lab. And what I'd uh, like to uh, reiterate is that uh, when you uh, test your kernel, you should start with some very small matrices, such as the dimension that we had, uh, we showed in this, uh, in, this, in this example. You can even start with even smaller, like two by two matrices, and, um, uh, and so that you can use the kind of data value that you know for sure, you can just calculate by hand and verify that your kernel is uh, doing all the right things. And then um, before you can uh, you you apply the kernel to much bigger matrices that uh, of the data that we pro uh, supply for your uh, testing. So um, in, at this point, uh, you we are at the end of week one. So I would like to also encourage you to take the quiz uh, as soon as possible to make sure that you solidify all your understanding of the week one material. For those of you who would like to learn more. I'd like to encourage you to read the textbook section 4.3. Thank you.